It's a rare plant index. It's not a drill, I repeat. It's an actual rare plant index. I also may actually like the plants in it. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome back to another Rare Plant Index. I know, I know, it really has been forever, but it, unless you've been living under a rock, you'll know that these things take absolutely ages to plan. I am very sorry for the delay, but there will be many more Rare Plant Indexes coming out this year. So if you actually don't know what a Rare Plant Index is, it is a series here on YouTube where I take a group of plants and I try my best to categorize them by what I like to call commercial rarity. So I may not have made this clear in the past, but when I talk about rarity of a plant, I'm not actually talking about, you know, how many grow in the wild. I'm actually just talking about how easily it is to get commercially, how easy it is to buy it from somebody, whether that be a private collector, a nursery, a plant shop, anything. So I'm not talking about how many are in the wild. So anyway, I like to categorize these plants from anywhere between uncommon, rare, very rare, extremely rare, and if applicable, a holy category. It's not always applicable. There's not always a plant that is considered, you know, the holy grail of, say, you know, Hoya, Monstera, Sansevieria. It's not always like that. One more thing. What is rare for me might not actually be rare for you. I might find something absolutely impossible to get here in the EU, but over in America, you guys might be able to get this plant very easily. This rare plant index this week is on the wonderful Hoya. So, okay, Hoya. There are around about maybe 500 or more. There's, there's hundreds. I'm not actually actually sure how many Hoya there are, but there are at least a few hundred. Now, I usually cover around 25 to 30 plants in these series in a typical rare plant index, but since I know I've kind of deprived y'all for like months of rare plant indexes, I thought, let's just do maybe 50. I don't know. Well, you know, it is still winter and I figure that our wish list could take a little bit of a punch. So without further ado, let's crack on. Right, we're gonna kick straight off and I'm gonna start my list as always with a couple of common Hoya, just in case you're not familiar with Hoya. So the first plant for common is the Hoya carnosa. Now, I know there are other forms of Hoya carnosa around. There are many forms, actually. It's an insane amount of forms that Hoya carnosa seems to have, but I am gonna cover some of those separately, which I wouldn't use usually do. So for now, I'm calling Hoya carnosa common, but I'm just talking about the bog standard green Hoya carnosa. Another common one, at least it appears to be, is Hoya australis, the regular Hoya australis. The last common Hoya I'd like to make you aware of is the Hoya compacta. Now, I know a lot of people might say that this is not, you know, so common, but obviously that's up for debate. There is a variegated form of this. I'm not going to mention it later on. I'm just going to mention it now. The variegated form of this is pretty highly sought after, I think. Obviously, everybody wants the compacta, but the variegated form is... Y'all, y'all are thirsty for that from what I can see on the internet, let me tell you. Before we go on though, the, uh, the compactor, I just want to say, yeah, I really, really love it. I'd have it. I'm just, just right off the bat. I kind of want this plant, guys. So here we go with Uncommon. The first plant I have in Uncommon, and these are some big ass lists, guys, so sit tight. The first plant in Uncommon is the Hoya diversifolia. This one, to be honest, has some pretty simplistic leaves. I wouldn't say it was anything, you know, to write home about, but the blooms are really cute. Disclaimer, I'm gonna butcher like every single name in this rare plant index, but I'm gonna try it anyway. The next on my list for uncommon is the Hoya Hoyskeliana. <laughs> so this is actually quite nice. It reminds me a little bit of my, what is it, Crimson Princess that I have? I have one Hoya, anybody that doesn't know, I have one lonely Hoya, it's very common but it's cute. It reminds me of that a little bit. And I really like the variegated version, but I also really like the way that the blooms come in on this. Okay, the next plant for Uncommon is the Hoya Coming... Comingiana? Comingiana? I don't know how to say that, guys. I'm so sorry. So this Hoya appears to grow in a way that is honestly quite different to any Hoya that I've seen in my research for this video. The leaves are very, very round. I cannot describe to you the way they grow, and I'm not going to try. So you're just going to have to, you know, use the image for reference. But the blooms are actually really cute on this. The blooms are, from what I say here, 
bright yellow with a beautiful pink flower in them. Flower in them? You know, I know the whole thing is a flower, but you get my point. They're really sweet. I quite like this one. I don't really see people talking about it, but I do like it. And it's it's not very expensive. It's reasonably easy to find as well. The next Hoya I have on my list for Uncommon is a little bit more of a foliage Hoya, and that is the Hoya Elliptica. Now, I'm pretty sure this is quite popular. It's got a lot more detailed foliage compared to the previous ones, to be honest, which is nice because from what I've seen and what I know of Hoya, they don't bloom that often. So if you're going to be left with some foliage, in my opinion, I would prefer to be left with like foliage with something to it, if you know what I mean, rather than just plain you know, green foliage like the last one. Next one on the list for Uncommon is the Hoya Fin Laysonii. And this is another Hoya with extremely striking foliage, actually. Look at that. That's really, really nice. It's got some lovely veining on it. This Hoya does look similar to other Hoyas on this list, so... I don't know. So you may see something very similar to this appear later on, but it's a nice little Hoya actually. Next up on my list for Uncommon, and I'm gonna be honest, I don't understand this one. This is Hoya Imbricata. And honestly, just think Monstera Dubai, but a little bit more flatter and rounder, you could say. The pattern is, I mean, it's not the same, but it, it's its reminiscent of, it's the closest thing I could probably compare it to. It's not one that I would own, I'm gonna be honest, because I'd rather have a Dubai. -er. But honestly, I had to double check that it was a Hoya because I didn't believe that it was a Hoya. So there you go. There's a really interesting, weird Hoya to add into the mix. Next Hoya on my list for uncommon is the Hoya Retusa. I do believe that is how it's pronounced. This is, to me, more reminiscent of a Ripsalis or a few different types of Ripsalis. I'm not an expert on Ripsalis. I just know what they look like. And to me, this looks a lot like that. You don't seem to get those dome-shaped kind of blooms on this one. You just get like a bloom here and there, like a little flower. So the flowers are a little bit more minimal, I would say, than on a lot of other Hoya. It's unique, but honestly, for me, it's a little bit messy looking. It's just... I don't know. It could be neater, you know? And it's funny because I actually quite like the look of Ripsalis. I think I could easily own a Ripsalis. There's quite a few that I've seen that I really like, but I don't know why I don't like this one, even though it reminds me of one. Doesn't make any sense. Next on the list, this is quite an interesting one as well for Uncommon, is the Hoya Sigillatis, I think. That's how you say it. This is, it's kind of weird. It's like a dusty rose color. Like I can actually get why people would want to have this one because I actually feel that you could coordinate a lot of deco with it. Like rose golds, a lot of dusty colors. I actually think it would look pretty hot in like a bedroom, you know, with the same kind of deco, the same color story, the same color palette, if you know what I mean. I could think it could look really, really good. The blooms are actually really sweet as well. Not my favorite blooms from what I've seen in this list, but they are very, very nice. I would definitely be keeping this one for the foliage if I kept it. It's a little bit dusty looking for me but I really totally appreciate why a lot of people would like this. I totally get it. Is it just me or do the blooms look kind of like, I don't know, they look kind of edible. Okay, next on the list for Uncommon is the Hoya Brevialata. <laughs> this one honestly kind of gives me Peperomia vibes and I can't remember for the life of me which Peperomia it gives me the vibes of, I really can't. It has super small round leaves that honestly, from what I've seen, is pretty atypical of Hoya. But if you do want something a little bit more compact that is maybe closer to a Peperomia and less like huge, big waxy foliage, this might be one that you'd like to try. The blooms are a little bit odd on this. For some reason, they remind me of like pomegranate seeds. I don't know why that is. <coughs> oh God, I'm sorry if you catch me coughing between plants guys i think i'm coming down with something again so really sorry if by the end of this video my voice is just gone i'm really sorry we will continue either way but if i just start sounding really bad it's not the microphone it's me so next on the list for uncommon is the hoya linealaris linearis sorry Linearis. Now, this is another one that looks a little bit more like a Ripsalis, but I do prefer it to the, oh gosh, what was it? Rachusa. I do prefer it to the Rachusa. I also actually prefer the way that the blooms kind of hang from the plant. I think it looks just much prettier than the Rachusa. If you are a fan of Ripsalis and you want to try a Hoya, I'd actually recommend this one. For me, this is just a little bit tidier and a little bit more purposeful than the Rachusa, but you know, you do you. You pick whichever one you prefer to put on your wish list. Right, the next one gonna be honest, I actually really like this. Like I would totally buy this, 100%. Providing I had space for a hanging plant, this this is this is mine. So this is the Hoya Bella. Now there's a, there's a few things I like about this plant. I absolutely love the way that it, it kind of, not the way it grows, but just the way it looks when it's like big and bushy. It's got these really cool, like 
like pointy leaves and I just really really love the way it looks like as a foliage plant I like it and even when it's in bloom I like it too the blooms are actually quite simplistic which I've discovered throughout this rare plant index I actually prefer quite simplistic blooms so I really like the white and the pink it's just a pretty plant it's a really pretty plant I really want to own this Next up on the list for Uncommon, yes, we're still in Uncommon. This is the Hoya Curtsii. Another Hoya that kind of gives me Peperomia vibes. It seems to be bigger than the other one, but it, it, I mean, the foliage is bigger than the other one, but it still gives me Peperomia vibes. The blooms are pretty cute on this. They're weird. They're not a bloom that I've seen yet. They seem pretty unique for a Hoya bloom. I don't love this one. I'm gonna be honest, I prefer so many more Hoya on this list, but I do actually quite like the silver on the leaves. That is something that I've discovered that I quite like. Next on the list, in Uncommon is the Hoya Globulosa. What a great name. Now, I quite like this. And I think it's because obviously it's more foliage dominant. There's some really good veining of the leaves. The leaves are longer, thicker, just more of a statement. I think it even looks nice, you know, as a cutting, which I think is quite important for Hoya because I know a lot of people collect Hoya, especially rare Hoya as cuttings rather than full plants. You can't necessarily get full plants. So for me personally, it's quite important to see how a Hoya looks as a cutting. So I do like it. I do feel like I need a Hoya with good foliage though, because I feel like because I'm new to Hoya and I don't even know if I'm going to get a bloom out of a Hoya, I think I need good foliage in order to like persist in owning a Hoya. There's another Hoya that I really, really want <laughs> on this list. I've seen this, I've seen this a while, guys. I've seen this for a few months now. And every time I see it, I want it and I want it bad. This is the Hoya Wayeti. I don't know if that's how you say it properly, but honestly, I can't decide whether I want the green version or the variegated version. I might even have to have both. Like, I don't know, I'm not decided, but I know that I need at least one of them. It has really, really pretty long leaves, but the way that it looks in a full plant, and you can get full plants of these very easily, very, very easily, it looks brilliant. There's something about that that looks really, really cool. I love it. The blooms are pretty cool as well. They're kind of like a, kind of like a berry color, I guess, like a red berry color. They're nice. I'm totally, totally gonna have this. Don't be surprised if I do a Hoya haul at some point and this is in it, just don't be surprised. In fact, save the date because it's coming. I will find one of these. Okay, my voice is dying. Next on the list for Uncommon, yes, we will get there, is the Hoya Engleriana, I think. This is quite unique. I actually like this. I'm concerned that it's a little bit sparse for me. On Google, I couldn't see any pictures of like a full plant of this. It was more or less just strands of it. So I don't know how it looks, you know, in full. I'm concerned that it's a little bit sparse just based on the picture I'm looking at. But I love the flowers on this. I think this is the kind of Hoya flower that I lean to. So a little bit more of a precise star shape. It is nice. I would like to see this in person before I kind of make my mind up on it fully, but it is very, very pretty. Next on the list is the Hoya Chrome. Croniana Silver. Now, obviously, there is a regular Croniana, but being that it's a rare plant index, being that we're spicing it up a little bit, I wanted to put the silver one in because there is kind of a thing about silver Hoyas, which I will get into later, and you're gonna want it if you don't already know about it. I'm not crazy on the blooms. As what I was just saying before, on a Hoya, I think I prefer the more pronounced flowers. Now, don't get me wrong, this is very unique and it's very beautiful. I totally get why people would want this. I'm totally accepting of it, but I don't love the blooms. Love the foliage, not the blooms. Next, on the list in Uncommon is the Hoya Mac Jilly How on earth? Hoya Mac Jilly I don't know. It's going to be a long day, guys. It's going to be a long day. So this has quite simple foliage, but the blooms, can I just say, they're very striking. And of all the Hoya on this list, bloom-wise, this is more of a, a very intense berry red, sharp, pointy bloom. I wouldn't get the plant because the foliage is a little bit plain for me, because I'm pretty sure I've identified, you know, what I prefer already based on the blooms. Totally get it, totally get why you would go for it. So if you want a Hoya where the blooms are more deeper, because I know a lot of the Hoya blooms aren't, they're a lot more brighter, this is a very, very nice one. Next one on the list, this is very unusual because the next plant I have on my list for Uncommon Hoya is the Hoya Macrophylla. Now, don't ask why, I don't know, but I have about two or three Hoya Macrophylla in my office, in my plant shop. And I don't know how they've got there. I don't know if a supplier put them in as like an added extra on top of an order. I don't know. But I saw this plant in my office a few weeks ago and I thought, what is that? It looks kind of like a Hoya. Didn't know what it was. Put it back down in its pot, left it. Didn't think about it. Until I did this rare plant index and I was like, oh my gosh, 
that's what it is. So I've managed to ID a Hoya that I technically own. So that's fun. I don't love this one. I quite like the foliage. I know it's not like the most amazing foliage in the world, but it's one of those things that because I've seen it in real life, I can appreciate it a little bit more. But I don't love the blooms. I like the dome shape. That's always good. But I think bloom wise, there are other Hoya that just, to be quite honest, kick this Hoya's butt in terms of blooms. So I will pass on it, even though I kind of have one already. Next on my list. <laughs> It's becoming a meme at this point. Next on my list for uncommon, I'm gonna put that on a t-shirt, is the Hoya Manipurensis. That sounds more like how you pronounce it, doesn't it? I do appreciate the unique shape of this Hoya. I do, honestly, it's great. But I'm not screaming for the blooms. They don't scream Hoya blooms. They're not the kind of bloom that I think I prefer on a Hoya. So I would 100% pass on this. I will reserve my judgment till I see it in person, but I'd like to pass because I haven't seen full plants of this either. So I want to see the full plant. I want to see it in real life, but if the blooms are anything to go by, it's a solid pass for me. Not really interested, I'm afraid. Please do keep in mind, guys, I know I sometimes say that I don't like a plant necessarily, but there was kind of a little bit of a thing here with like Begonia Gate in the last Rare Plant Index because people picked up on the fact that I didn't love most of the Begonia that were on there. These lists aren't for me to love. Love. These lists are for you guys to find something that you like and for basically all of us to kind of be eye open to different plants because I didn't know about Hoya until I researched this list. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's not for me to like every plant. You don't have to like every plant. It's okay. You can have things that you prefer and things that you don't. And they don't have to be rare. They don't have to be common. It doesn't matter. These lists are for you guys to find what you like and don't like because honestly that helps. And it could save you a lot of money in the long run. So please don't be disheartened if there's plants in here that I don't love. I'm not gonna lie about it. I'm just gonna be honest and say, you know, I don't love this plant, but the, really that's not what these are for. So please bear that in mind when I bash plants in the future on these rare plant indexes. But that's not really happening today because I'm, I may I'm, I may have caught the Hoya bug, like a little bit. I know a few people predicted this and you're 100% right. You're 100% right. I, I'm pretty sure I've caught it. Next in uncommon is the Hoya Sarawak. Sarawak. I kind of like this, but again, it's not my favorite, but I really, really, really appreciate the leaves on this one. These are quite unique from what I've seen. I don't know if the plant I'm looking at has naturally massive leaves or that's just grown large. I think it just has massive leaves. Either way, it's pretty awesome. The blooms are quite nice. Not my favorite, quite nice. They're pretty understated. I would say they're kind of like a, is that cherry pink? A purpley pink, a fuchsia, I think is probably the right color. They're okay, not my favorite, but it's nice. Next on the list, and I do like this one. This is the Hoya Multiflora, also known as the Shooting Star Hoya. And I know it is not the only Hoya with this type of bloom, but I'm pretty sure this is the one that is known as the Shooting Star Hoya. Could be wrong, who knows? But I would obviously get this Hoya purely for the blooms, and I think people do, because the foliage is just plain old foliage. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Next on the list we better speed up or we're gonna be here all day next on the list is the Hoya Viola I quite like this one it's a little bit chubby but it's still got some definition so it's basically me throughout January just gonna say it I do like the flowers on this one because they're kind of like little lollipops it's very very adorable they look edible why do they look edible man they really do they look like little sweets next on the list in uncommon is the Hoya Callistophila and this is another Hoya with really good foliage if you you know you're gonna get bored of waiting for those blooms but honestly I don't see how this is any different to the what was it called Finlay Sonii I don't see how it's any different I could have, you know, made a mistake there and it's the same plan. I don't know. Please correct me in the comments. I'm told that there's quite a few higher out there that are so similar. It takes like a trained eye to identify them. So maybe they are different. I'm keeping it in here just in case it is. It's okay. I don't love the bloom. I think it's very simple. I don't know. I like the foliage. I do. I just, it's not enough to, to make me get it. I don't think. Oh my gosh. Can you believe we're out of uncommon? We're actually out of it. That was all of uncommon guys. Can you believe it? This is why I like to whittle my rare plant indexes down to about 25 to 30 because this is tough. But anyway, moving on to rare, here we go. First Hoya I have in the rare category is the Hoya Hypolasia. And I actually think this is quite unique for a Hoya based on what I've seen. So it looks like, and I can't honestly confirm because my image is just not showing me very well. I can't tell if this is waxy or actually velvety. I actually can't tell. So if you know in the comments, please let me know. However, no doubt in editing, I'll you know have a high res picture and I'll be able to know, but I'm only looking at like a little 
little picture on my phone, so it's like super difficult to judge anything. The blooms are very cute. They're like a lemony peach color. It's nice and I wanted to include it because of the leaves because I feel that they're different to a lot of Hoya leaves. So there you go. Hoya Hypolasia. Next on my list for rare is the Hoya Imperialis Alba, specifically. Yes, there is obviously a normal Imperialis. I think there's a few different varieties of it, so if you're interested in this, please feel free to go and have a look at, you know, the other ones. I'm not covering them all, but this is really, really nice. Now, I don't like the foliage. I feel like I just want to take an eye into it and kind of straighten that out. I don't know why, I just, I don't love the foliage, but the balloons are kind of amazing. They don't look real. They look like someone has like made them out of like clay and then like varnished them over. It's so bizarre. They kind of look rubbery, rubbery slash plasticky. I, I don't know, but I really love them. Not only that, right, but the image I'm looking at of the actual blooms, there is somebody's hand in the, like, in the background of the blooms, and it would appear that the blooms are actually massive. So I don't know how true that is, but if it is true, I'm interested. I'm interested to know. Next on the list for Ray is a very, very, very popular Hoya. This is the Hoya Oberwarte. Now, I think I'm showing you the splashed version. I'm not entirely sure until I get into editing. There are a few different types of this Hoya. There's variegated, there's regular, there's splash, there may be other types, I'm not totally sure. Everybody seems to want this Hoya. Now, I'm not entirely sure why as a non-Hoya person, to be honest. The blooms are pretty cute. I actually, I'm looking at a picture of this now and it's kind of on like a looped trellis. And to be fair, it looks really, really pretty. I do get it, but I feel like there is even more hype to this plant that I'm not aware of. So if you know why, you know, please let me know in the comments. It's nice. I would consider it. Next on the list for rare is the Hoya Bordenii. 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 Yes. So I love the red foliage on this. I don't know if it comes out red due to temperature or it's a maturity thing or what. I couldn't find a straight answer on Google. I think a lot of Hoyas, you know, their leaves come out red and then go green. I think that's right. I don't know. Again, totally correct me if I'm wrong. I'm all more willing to learn. I do like the blooms on this, but they still look jellyfied. They like, they still look like somebody's kind of made them and you can eat them. Like I half expect to see them on a cupcake. I don't like. You know what it is? Someone should make a Haribo kind of jelly mix, but it's Hoya blooms. Like, can you not imagine eating a packet of blooms from Hoyas? Because they look so edible. Like, tell me I'm not onto something there. Honestly, tell me I'm not onto something there. I don't know. Just wanna eat them. Just wanna eat them. Next on the list is the Hoya Shepherdii. I believe that is how you say it. Now, I do like this one. I don't like it as much as the Wee Tea. I don't like it as much as that because I feel like the other one is more full and structured. This one is a little bit more wispy, but it is very, very, very nice. Oh, and the blooms, the blooms, right? They're flowers, but they're like tiny little fuzzy flowers. Like they just, they've got like little fur on them. It's so cute, honestly. I get why you'd want this. I think it could be based on the furriness of the flowers, but I still think I prefer the the way, the what, what even is it called? Wayeti? Wayeti eye? Wayeti. Moving on to the Hoya Weimaniae. Weimaniae, we, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, that's what it is now. I wanted to include the picture of this that I could find where it was like the most red that I could find it. Just to show you how insanely red this goes, because that is red. Like, let me tell you, if you want something that can go red, that, that's your boy right there. It's nice and the blooms are really weird. They don't look like Hoya flowers. They're kind of, to me, they look kind of like would you say beads with like a little flower stuck on them? They don't really look like flowers as such. Really interesting. Next on the list for rare is the Hoya SP Kalimantan. Kalimantan? Kalimantan. Kalimantan. How is this? How is this not different from the other two? How? Is this before it was described? Because obviously I don't think this is described. I don't know. I, I'm struggling to see the difference, guys. I'm so sorry, by the way, if I have put in the plan, this, you know, the same plan three times. If somebody could kind of hash it out in the comments below as to what's what and which one's the harder one to get a hold of, that'd be really great. I'd be really interested. Likewise, if I have got it right, then please do let me know. I, I do think there are some differences between the two. Like this, uh, the foliage on this one, the veining in the leaves looks much darker than the others, and the shape looks a little bit different, and it also looks more waxy. Actually, it looks thicker. Next on the list, in rare is the high 
Victoria Australis Lisa. Now I did mention Australis in common. This is kind of what I was talking about. There's regular Australis and there are some forms that people really strive to get. This is one of them. I kind of get why, to be honest, it's got to be the variegation. It's got to be the color that this thing produces. So it looks like it produces red leaves when they emerge and then they'll fade to like a bronzy orangey color and then they'll go down to like a, a variegated kind of greeny color. It's quite nice. I, I do get it. It's proper autumn vibes actually. I do see this one a lot on Instagram so I'm assuming that it is pretty highly sought after and it is one that a lot of people want to add to their collection so if you're interested have a look on Instagram. Next on the list for rare I don't know how many people haven't heard of this plant but you may have been under a tiny bit of a rock if you hadn't heard of this one. This is the Hoya Kerii. Just gonna be honest I'm gonna put my opinion out there because I feel like everybody has to come to this point when they talk about this plant and here it is. I don't like it right? I don't. I just don't. I'm so sorry. I know it's probably really unpopular opinion, but I don't like it. I don't care if it's variegated on the margin, on the inside, if it's all green. I just kind of find it a little bit ugly. I, d I just don't like them. There we go. Unpopular opinion of the day, because there's got to be one, right? But th this is the one probably I like one of the least on this entire list, actually. They are very, very, very sought after, but honestly, I, I don't understand why, personally. Okay, next on the list for rare, and I think it's rare, this could possibly be moved down a category, but this is the Hoya Crinkle 8, or so it is known as. I like this one, I'd like to see it in person, I think I might be swayed to buy it, believe it or not. I know you can get quite lucky in America and you can find these in box stores, I've seen a few YouTubers, you know, find these very, very easily. That's why I'm saying they could be maybe moved down a category, but over here, not so much. The flowers, I like the flowers, they're like a baby pink. These are some of the nicest flowers I've seen yet in this list actually, like to date. I I do feel like it would be a little bit of a, an annoying Hoya to look after. I don't know, I just feel like you'd be forever dusting in those little, in his little abs. You just dusting away, dusting away. I feel like they're just, you know, a dust cavern. Last plant in rare is the Hoya latifolia, also known as the dinner plate Hoya. This is bizarre, but I, I can't not include this. It's a Hoya, you know, as the name would suggest, absolutely massive leaves like massive this is a massive plant gloriosum levels of massive leaves the like crazy crazy big leaves this one's probably collected just purely for its uniqueness alone i don't even think the blooms even probably factor into this i think this is a foliage situation here let me know in the comments what your opinion on this hoyer is whether you'd own it or not because it's very i don't know i think it takes a certain sort of collector to want to own this just my opinion i'm not sold on this one i wouldn't have it but i would love to see it does that make sense i don't want to own it but i really want to see it oh deep breath very rare. <laughs> We've gone up a category again to very rare. So the first plant in very rare is the Hoya Pretori. Pretorii, my apologies, Pretorii. I think that's how you say it. <sighs> Gosh, are you tired yet? I am. <laughs> so this Hoya does honestly look quite average. I'm, I don't like the foliage actually, but I love the blooms. The blooms are really, really, really cute. And I had to include it for the blooms because they like little fuzzy, I don't know. Like I don't, I can't liken these blooms to anything in real life or, or something I've seen. I, I really can't, but they're so cute. They're all fluffy and they just hang. I would rather have the shooting star Hoya though, the multi-flora than this one, because I like the foliage a little bit better, but it's nice. It's very cute. I had to include it for the blooms. Next on the list for very rare, and I had to check because this is weird to me, but this is Hoya Spartioides. Yeah, that's a Hoya. Believe it or not, that is a Hoya. Uh, how strange is that? How strange is that? So it must just bloom on the end of each little, you know, stem. I don't know what they're called. That's just so random. That's that's one for the Hoya collector, isn't it, really? That's just the most weird thing ever. I'd love to see a full plant of it, unless that is a full plant, like a full bushy one. I don't really know. That is just so strange. Next on the list for very rare, we have the Hoya clandestina. This Hoya foliage is very, very similar, in my opinion, to the Hoya macrophylla. So if you do like the macrophylla, you probably would like this one. I don't see why you wouldn't. I think it's a natural progression, really. I do like the preciseness of these flowers, and I know that might not make any sense, but they're kind of like, like sharp. I don't know. They, they're so gummy, though. Gummy, gummy. Gummy, that's the word I've been looking for. Not rubbery, not jelly, but gummy. They look gummy. That's what a lot of Hoya blooms look like. They look gummy. Next on the list for very rare, and I do appreciate the blooms on this one a lot. And this is the Hoya Serpents. Not my favorite in terms of foliage. 
as I've said before, I do prefer larger foliage on Hoyas, generally something, you know, a little bit more. But the blooms, as I've just said, are pretty awesome. It's like, they're like fluffy flowers, but they are the most beautiful sage kind of green color. And they honestly, they're really unique. I have not seen a Hoya with flowers like that in my list at all. If you want a Hoya with flowers that color, the Serpents is 100% the one to go for. So the next one on my list for very rare is what is known as the Hoya Megalaster. I mean, this is one for plant tinder if I ever saw it, to be honest, with a name like that. One, it clearly has abs. It clearly has abs. Each leaf has pretty much abs for days. And two, <laughs> its name is Michalaster. I don't know why they call it that. Maybe the blooms last a long time. I don't know. Someone give me a clue. I don't know. <laughs> Blooms are cute. They're very, like, um, it's not berry red. Maybe it is berry red. They're unique to a lot of other higher I've seen, so the blooms are very nice as well. And of course, the foliage is pretty unique too. So it is a nice one. Next on the list for very rare is a Hoya that has been on my wish list since last year. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you must be new here because the next plant on very rare is the Hoya polyneura, also known as the fishtail Hoya. And if you don't know why it's known as fishtail Hoya, it's reasonably obvious looking at the leaves because they form little fishtails. And I just think this plant is so stunning. It takes so many boxes for me for Hoya. It has really interesting shaped leaves, obviously. It's reasonably dense. I think as a plant structurally, it's quite dense and I do like that. It has super cool patterns on the leaves as well. And the blooms. I love the blooms. It looks to be here like a uh, lemon with red so that it just looks, it's so good. It's so good. I still want this Hoya. I will still find it. I must mention that there is a silvery version of this that is much rarer, that is harder to get hold of, but I think I actually prefer the all green. Next on the list in very rare is the Hoya Lucky Eye. Now this one is pretty rare and it also does tick a lot of boxes for people that love Hoya, I would say. So this one has super long kind of blotched kind of leaves. They have a ruffle along the edge and it also has those amazing like shooting star type blooms that we saw in the multiflora early on. So it does tick, as I said, a lot of boxes. Next on my list in very rare is the Hoya Meredithii. Another Hoya that has super contrasty veining. Are we noticing a pattern? It does look obviously similar to a few others on this list, but it does look a little bit more rounder and more plump. So I can actually tell the difference with this one pretty easily. It, it doesn't look the same. It's got chunk. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's got booty. It's got more to it. This is turning into plant tinder real fast, <laughs> like real fast. But it does have very cute blooms, not as nice as the polyneura, I don't think, but it has very nice, delicate, lemony blooms. So really, really nice one. If you're looking for one like that and you prefer the blooms to this one over some of the other patterned leaves, you might want to try this one. Oh my gosh, we're out of very rare. <laughs> my throat is, it's not good. My lips are going really dry as well. Okay, cracking on. This is the extremely rare category and the first plant in the extremely rare category is straight on my wish list. It is the Hoya Carnosa Grey Ghost or Nova Ghost. It may go by both names. I'm not 100%, but this is basically a Carnosa and it's silver tinted and I really like it. I don't know why. I think it's because I like the Carnosa anyway because I have a Crimson Princess. So I'm already happy with the foliage and how dense it is, but it's silver. This does sell for a pretty penny online. It's not cheap, I'm just gonna be honest. You really have to do your digging for this one. All the plants in this category, you're gonna have to start digging 100%. This is really nice. I really want it. I haven't got a picture of the blooms. I assume they're great. They may vary from, you know, the original Carnosa bloom. They probably do, they tend to. I'm probably gonna get it consider it added to my wish list. Guys, I think I'm a convert to Hoya. I'm sure I'm being converted here. I'm sure of it. And I feel like once I get one Hoya, that's it. We're done. Next on the list, in extremely rare, and I don't know if this is how you say it, but I think it is Hoya SP4 WMZ. I don't know either. It has foliage that can turn very, very red, and the blooms are kind of like a dusty pink color. It's not for me. I prefer the Hoya. Like, rarity has nothing to do with it. I do prefer a lot of the other Hoya. If you're a Hoya collector and you're looking for something new, this could be one you might want to start looking up on the internet and sourcing. People do seem to be looking for it quite a bit, so that should probably tell you something. I don't know. Next on the list, for extremely rare is the Hoya Michelle. It looks like a Nobavata kind of splash to me, only 
it actually looks a little bit better. It looks like an Orbivata splash on steroids, but it is really, really pretty. Hopefully it's not an Orbivata and I haven't just screwed this up. I can imagine that when this plant bulks up though, en masse, it probably looks incredible. So I would like to see this in real life. I'd certainly be keen to be looking at more pictures of this on the internet to see if I can, you know, like it, find it. So I'm very interested in that. So I will be keeping my eye open for that because I want to know what it looks like collectively. Next on the list, an extremely rare, and this is quite a sought after one. Personally, I don't get why, but it's quite sought after. This is the Hoya Undulata. I'm just gonna be honest, it looks kind of to me like it's lost in a fight, but the blooms, I've got to say, are incredibly unique looking for a Hoya. So perhaps that is why uh, people are, you know, looking for it. Cause I, I don't see how it can be the foliage, sorry just my opinion. But the blooms are really cool. They're like a really pointy, more 3D bloom for a Hoya. Really, really nice, actually. Okay, I'm actually really pleased that I found this because this Hoya excites me quite a lot. Like you can hear my smile, I can tell. This is the Hoya Aspar. Just stop what you're doing. I don't care what you're doing right now. Stop and look at this because this is like a purple tinted Hoya and it looks incredible. It's got lovely, long, pointy, purple, leaves. It is so pretty. The blooms are pretty awesome as well. They're kind of like hairy blooms, but the hair's kind of like brushed back. It's, it's a bit weird, but they are highly unique blooms. And I would just love to see this plant, it, you know, a full plant in bloom. I bet that would be honestly quite a spectacle. I think it's gorgeous. If I see this online, I'm probably going to try and get this. This is really, really pretty Hoya really pretty Hoya. Okay, second to last Hoya in extremely rare because there is no holy, but this is a Hoya that is going to slide its way onto my wish list. I'm just telling you straight up because this is just, it's gorgeous. This is the Hoya Wilbur Graves. And let me just say right now, this ain't cheap. I've seen waiting lists. I've seen great difficulty in getting this plant. This is not a cheap plant from what I've seen, from what I've seen on the internet. Obviously prices fluctuate, but this ain't cheap, let me tell you. Doesn't stop me wanting it, but it's beautiful. It's kind of coveted and I can completely, completely see why. It's gorgeous, got gorgeous leaf shape for me. It's got beautiful silver, like a very strong silver splash, but it's so contrasty. Does that make sense? It's just, it's really nice. Like it's very purposeful. Not only that, but it can go pink. So it can go pink as well as silver. And it's really, really pretty. It's the prettiest Hoya I think I might have seen. If I could pick one Hoya from this list, it might have to be this one. It's tough, but it might have to be this one. I'm not gonna say anymore because I'm just gonna let you Google it and start hunting for it. It's that nice. That is beautiful. Hoya collectors, get on it. This is gorgeous. I, I don't know how I didn't know about this. It's beautiful. I'll race you. <laughs> the last plant on my list in extremely rare is also sliding onto my wish list. Just gonna be honest, because I said I'd probably get both versions of this plant, but now I know there's an even more rare version that looks even more beautiful. I have to have this one as well. This is the Hoya Compactor Jodie's Silver. So basically a Hoya Compactor or a Hindu rope, however you wanna you know, describe it, but it's silver. And these are hard to get, let me tell you. They are they are purchasable, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying these are impossible to get, but they're very difficult to get. It just looks amazing. It might cost you a little bit more than the Wilbur Graves, actually. I think from what I saw, it was more expensive. But if you're a higher head, let's be honest, you're gonna do what you gotta do. You're gonna get it. So that's going straight on my wish list. Wait, don't I have like five higher now on my wish list? That's that's quite a lot for not really owning Hoya. Does this mean I'm converted? Does this mean that 2020 is gonna be full of Hoya? Is that what this means? Attention all hanging plants. Start worrying. You may be rearranged, you may be moved. Things might happen. New furniture may also happen. We need, we need Hoya. We need Hoya now. I'm really sorry in advance if there are many many higher halls. Also, I didn't mention at the beginning of the video, but I bought a megaphone. There's no reason for this. I just, I just bought a megaphone. 
Thank you very much. If you actually made it to the end, I tried to make sure there's some really good treats in there for you if you did make it to the end. Let me know if this is the kind of length that you'd want a rare plant index. I don't know if I can do this every time, but I might just not whittle them down as much if, you know, if you do prefer them longer. I know a lot of people all the time ask me for longer, longer, longer videos, so let me know what you thought of this. I've, I'm definitely into it now. To be honest, it's made me worse. I now just want to go higher shopping, but I have a lot to do today. I have a lot to do today. I have like two more videos to film today, so if you see more videos, videos where I look exactly the same. That's probably why I need to do all my filming before I go to Thailand. So I'm sorry if you get a bit sick of this because I'm not going to change my top like a lot of YouTubers do and make it look like they're filming on different days. I'm just going to just go with it. This is what you get. If you like a little secret, I'm actually recording another Red Plan Index like straight after this one. So when I said it was back, I meant it guys. But that said, please do leave your suggestions for more rare plant indexes that you'd like to see in the comments below. Also, slight side note, I have merchandise. So if you look beneath my video in the description, or there might be a little shelf underneath my video if you're on PC or mobile, you might be able to see that. I have some merchandise, so if you'd like to go and check it out, feel free, you don't have to. But if you wish to show your support and buy my merch, that is absolutely appreciated. So thank you very much. If you'd like to see any specific designs, anything like that. I am working on some custom designs. Please leave those comments down below as well. Just basically just comment anything down below that you want to say, because I know you all do it anyway. I'm going to go now because I need a break and I think I need a limb sip before the next video I'm doing. So I'm going to love you and leave you. I'm sorry I kept you too long. I hope I didn't murder your wish lists too hard. I know mine took a beating because I think as usual, my taste just ends up being very expensive and I can't help it. So if you like this video, then please leave a like down below. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, whether it be these rare plant indexes or a lot of other content that I do here on YouTube, then please feel free to hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching this video. I had so much fun making it. I think I may be a slight convert. We shall see. And I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.